this is going to be a series called The Supernatural Book. And in this series, it might be a little bit different because I'm going to th try to throw in some humor and talk about a few things that I've always speculated about and things like that. So don't get bit out of shape if, if I say something that's just speculation. You know, a lot of times that a lot of times you don't have Bible for something and you kind of just speculate or throw out an idea or, you know, talk to a friend about something and, you know, you don't judge each other or uh, get mad at each other about uh, an idea, an idea or thought you had or something that you've just imagined or speculated about that it could have been this way or it could have been that way. But let's just have fun with this, the Supernatural book. And the first episode is going to be called, You're a Mean One, Mr. Lucifer. So the Supernatural book, obviously, is the Bible itself. And the first part of this story is before the beginning. Before and in the beginning is what we'll cover in this episode. But before the beginning... God the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost were here in eternity past, and these three are one. Psalm 90 and verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. There was a time, although it was outside of time, that there was only the Godhead in existence. This was before Lucifer, before the angels, before death, before man. There was the Godhead, and outside of them was nothing. And if it weren't for the Godhead, nothing would be here. You see, the Almighty was here before man, before any angel, before heaven, before hell, before the darkness, before the devil. And the Bible clearly says in John 1, 1 through 3, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Colossians 1, 16 through 17, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So these principalities and powers that I just talked about, that's your angelic beings. Uh, these principalities and powers were created before God even laid the foundations of the earth. And Job 38 explains how they were here praising God as he formed it. The angels, the cherubs, and seraphs all believe in an almighty creator because they saw him create with their own eyes. And these heavenly creatures that would end up being worshipped by man were created by the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, as the Bible calls him. And when it pleased God to begin creating, that's what he did. When it pleased God to begin creating these creatures, way back when, we're not sure when, that's what he did. He formed the seraphim and the cherubim, molded their faces, gave them their wings. We're not sure the process of how he done it, or if he just snapped his fingers and did it, or just spoke it into existence like he did many other things. But, I mean, you could imagine, you know, what if he did make it like a, like at a factory or something on the production line, the cherubim, you know, in their infant stages might have got a little envious and asked the Lord why he gave the seraphim those two extra wings. Because, you know, the seraphim, they got six wings and the cherubim only have four. And, you know, I'm sure the Lord would have said, you know, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. And don't you know... Don't you guys know my judgments are unsearchable and my ways past finding out? I mean, who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? You know, what right do you, uh, cherubim, have to question God? Because I made you. Yeah, I made all the cherubim. I make the cherubim. I make the seraphim. But and with those cherubims speechless, I'm sure there was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. Neither doth any cherub ask him any more questions, at least not any more questions like that. But he created the angels also, whose appearance were like 
mighty warriors with sharp two-edged swords. I mean, just one could have killed 185,000 mighty men at once. And I'm sure those seraphim and cherubim were could have been over there snickering and saying, wow, these guys just look like regular dudes. But I guess if they, you know, had wings and four faces like us and calves feet like us, then you wouldn't be able to entertain angels unawares. And the Lord was putting out these heavenly creatures like a fine-tuned machine ran by a worker trying to make production or something. I mean, in no time, he turned out an innumerable company of angels, as it says in Hebrews twelve twenty-two. You know, they didn't have all power. They didn't have all knowledge. There would be some things that the angels desired to look into even. You know, they weren't perfect. They weren't God, even though man would eventually worship them as gods. I mean, there were also creatures with higher ranks. Michael, the archangel, for example, he was the highest rank of the angels. And you had angels, you had angels with the gift of gab, like Gabriel. He didn't have wings, but he could fly swiftly. They were all ministering spirits and fierce, greater in power and might than any man. And there was one of those cherubs that was greater in power and might than those angels. Well, Maybe other than Michael. This one was Lucifer. He had a little bit more time spent on him than all the rest. He was sort of a special addition with some extra features. And the Lord installed something in his head that made him full of wisdom. He was perfect in beauty. Ezekiel twenty-eight twelve says, Every precious stone was his covering, such as the sardius, topaz, diamond, barrel, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle and gold you might say this particular son of god was the golden child tabrets and pipes were prepared in his being he wasn't an ordinary son of god he was the anointed cherub that covereth and he was going to have an up close and personal job around god's throne he was made king over the spiritual kingdom of god he was over all the angels he was made king over the physical kingdom of heaven when, in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And that is a complete creation right there. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And what follows in Genesis 1-2 is something else. Lucifer, the anointed cherub, would have had a very close relationship, up close and personal relationship with the Lord during this time. But you know, 2 Samuel 22, 11 says, The Lord rode up on a cherub and did fly. He used the cherubs as a form of transportation. That's really awesome. That sounds a lot better than a Batmobile or that giant dog thing on the never-ending story or really anything you can think of. But the Lord can teleport, fly, run faster than a speeding bullet, but still he's got his favorite modes of transportation. And I'm sure, the, I'm sure that anointed cherub made those other cherubs feel like they were a, a little bit out of style. Or so last summer, or like Fred Flintstone's footmobile. I mean, they probably looked at Lucifer and saw the push-button start and those heated seats. And might have even got a little jealous. Uh, probably not. They're probably not like us. But a lot of the angels were fond of Michael. And a lot of them were fond of Lucifer. But at this time, they all regarded the Lord as the Most High, the High and Lofty One, the Alpha and Omega, the King of Kings, the I Am, the Everlasting Father, the beginning and the ending. And I mean, if you went into an angel's bedroom, you saw the Lord on their posters, on their screensaver, on their bedsheets. He said, let all the angels of God worship him. And at this time, all the angels were of God. There was no man, just God, you know, and the angels, the seraphim and the cherubim and other heavenly creatures that we may not even know about. There was no worshiping of angels or cherubs or seraphs. And Lucifer, he probably, he probably could have take, taken any of them on on the wrestling mat. Apollyon, a.k.a. Abaddon, a.k.a. the destroyer. Might have been the reigning champ until Lucifer had him wrapped up in a chokehold, kind of like a 
like a serpent or something, you might say. You might think Lucifer might have represented the reptilian class of the cherubs, the way you had him in that chokehold. And I mean, Lucifer was the champ on the wrestling mat, if they had one. Uh, that was until Michael entered the friendly competition amongst the brothers. And there was a lot of friendly trash talk, a lot of disputing between Lucifer and Michael, mostly Lucy doing all the talking, and it was a great battle between the two, but Michael always prevailed against him. Lucifer may have, may have excelled above all the rest in wisdom and beauty, but in the ring, Michael had all the juice. And with these heavenly creatures all worshiping their creator, the Lord began to make them a place to inhabit. As I said, back there in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And Isaiah 45, 18 speaks of the Lord creating the earth, and he created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And like I said, that's a finished creation in one verse. And in this one verse, you have things that are hated by every atheist. I mean, the fool said in his heart that there is no God. You know, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. I mean, they were here to see it. You know, for every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. But the Lord created the heaven and the earth. And during this time, the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, as it talks about in Job 38. And the anointed cherub, as I talked about before, was given a throne. He had sons of God under him. He had dominion and a crown. He had authority and respect. He was recognized for his wisdom and beauty. And as time went on, something happened, happened in the heart of this cherub named Lucifer. This creature that the Lord had created began to look the creator in the eye with this contentment and said something deep, deep down in his heart. You see, once upon a time, we aren't sure when, but the Lord, most likely sitting on his throne in all his glory and holiness, he could hear the wicked thoughts flowing through the devil's heart like blood pumping through his veins. And deep, deep down in that black heart, it was saying, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also up on the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend up above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And all of a sudden, you could hear a terrifying laugh from the throne of God that would make your blood curl and your hair stand on end. It was the holy laughter of God as he heard the foolish thoughts in the heart of Satan. The first sin had entered the creation. The first rebellion was taking place. And with a snap of those fingers, which would soon sling the stars into existence, he cast out the devil positionally. And as Lucifer fell and turned into his new natural state as a great red dragon, Leviathan, I bet he could hear the angels saying, you're a monster. And worst of all, he could hear the terrifying voice that sounded like many waters, the Almighty, and the heaven trembled as he said, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the th stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? You are not the morning star. You are just a wannabe. How art thou cut down to the ground? You're not the most most high. Now you're just a has-been. Lucifer was so lifted up that he thought he could exalt himself even further. But he heard the terrifying prophecy of the Almighty. Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. And the devil might have let out a sinister laugh that showed no intimidation. And the Lord might have replied, I made you with ears to hear me, Lucifer. And the only reason you don't fear me is because you were made without fear. You were programmed that way. You made your choice, Lucifer. Now I will continuously harden your heart to show my wrath and to make my power known, just like I'll do some of your prodigies in the future. But what was wrong with the heart of the devil? Had his heart grown a thousand times too small? 
because of his pride and iniquity. Those tabrets and pipes that the Lord placed in his being would now play a different tune. He would go from creating orchestras that praise God to producing the song of fools. Kicked out positionally, he would still have access to the throne, but his main domain would be a deep, dark, and lonely location. The Lord stretched out the very hand that formed that crooked serpent and yanked the crown of the kingdoms right off the top of Lucifer's head and traded it out with another crown that said king over all the children of pride. The devil would sit in his lair and his heart would grow more bitter and more hard and more cold and evil with each passing moment. And in heaven, the Almighty, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the Holy Creator, sat back down on his throne and looked out through those eyes that would pierce through the most fierce creature in his creation and looked out over that diverse multitude of heavenly hosts and said, Choose you this day whom you will serve, Jehovah or Satan. And you're not going to believe this, but some of those heavenly creatures chose Lucifer and fell with him. And what happens next is terrifying. The Lord floods the original creation. You see, when the Lord made it originally, He formed it to be inhabited. He created it to be inhabited. Now look what happens in Genesis 1-2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. You see, the Lord flooded Lucifer out in the original earth. 2 Peter 3, 4 through 6 talks about it. It talks about how whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Now this can't be Noah's flood because it says all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. In 2 Peter 3, 4. Noah wasn't at the beginning. Lucifer was. The flood is something that took place before Adam and Eve were even created, it took place. this flood took place before Noah was created or born. It took place before the recreation that you see recorded throughout the rest of Genesis chapter 1. You see, before Lucifer's rebellion, the heaven and the earth were not separated by this great darkness. This darkness came about because of a judgment from the Almighty. The heavens were completely different in Genesis 1-1. And right here is where the judgment on Lucifer and his world would have taken place. Right in between the first two verses in your Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's a complete creation. Lucifer rebels. A tragedy happens. And it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now this darkness separates God from the creation. A search of the word darkness to the scriptures will show you that it is completely negative. For example, Proverbs 2.13, Who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Showing you it's a completely different path than going the path of uprightness. Proverbs 4.19, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Isaiah 45.7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So, the phrase without form and void is also associated with the time of destruction in Jeremiah 4.23. So it doesn't seem far-fetched that in Genesis 1-2 when it says without form and void that a catastrophe had taken place here as well as in Jeremiah 4.23 where it also talks about a time of destruction and uses the phrase without form and void. The word void itself means to cancel out or to make invalid like a Nam 2.10. She is empty and void and waste. So in this, in this first episode, you see eternity past. The Godhead was back there in eternity past. He created everything. There was no big bang, no evolution or any of that. Scene two, the Lord creates the angels, the cherubs, the seraphs, and in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. A catastrophe takes place when Lucifer rebels and God uses water to destroy it all. And Lucifer 
would have looked out over that destroyed world that used to be his and began to be full of bitterness and anger, and the rest of his existence would be to destroy anything that the Lord decides to create. And this is where the story begins.